This session is brought to you by Zurich Life and Investments. These guys are one of the last true independent life insurers going around and they're Swiss, so you know their stuff is solid. These guys really understand and believe in the value of advice, which is why they invest in programs like this one and partner with groups like XY Advisor to help drive the positive evolution of financial advice in Australia. Their team are just really good people as well. So if you haven't already connected with them to learn more, check out their website or speak to your business development contact. This session is also brought to you by Sun Super. They're one of the fastest growing profit for members or industry funds in Australia. They were the very first of these funds to partner with advisors and they've got functionality where you can actually link to your client's Sun Super accounts and charge advice fees through the fund, as well as a number of uh, tech innovations to make it easier for you to work with your clients. They've got great investments, they're really, really cheap, and their team are just generally legends. So if you haven't already connected with Sun Super, give them a shout, because they're doing some really cool stuff. Welcome, welcome. What's happening? So fucking glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's been waiting for the invite for so long. Yes. Uh -huh. I've been sat literally in the office. Every time the, the letter comes in the door, I grab it, I open it up. I think it's got an X and Y in it. It could be yeah. there. <laughs> I pull it up, try and open it. Yeah. No, it's awesome to be here. Thank you. Hey, it's good. It's, we're, we've, uh, we've finally got some uh, good audio from enough people complaining for mm. long enough. Uh, that what we, you know, the sole purpose of what we were trying to achieve was horrible quality. Uh, you know, eventually we made the decision to to improve. Well, uh, my dulcet tones are feeling very dulcet right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know oh. what dulcet means, by the way? Uh, it's like it's like the opposite of my voice. I think and... it's uh... the, the opposite of your voice. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Mine's not very dulcet, isn't it? Well, what what is dulcet? Sultry and I uh, think it's smooth. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so, yeah, okay, so the opposite. A bit like Ray's voice. voice. It's like Vin Diesel meets Cary Grant. That's kind of dull. Oh, goodness. Jeez, oh, it's from a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an iron giant, that kind of thing. <laughs> nice. I, find it, I find it hilarious we're here in Erskineville, the capital, hipster capital of Sydney, and Ben's not in the room. I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't fit the beard in with all of us. <laughs> he tried to get through the door. He just kept squishing. <laughs> so what's been happening, mate? Oh, uh, what's been happening with us? Uh, it was an interesting end to the year, actually. Um, all I can say is that that sort of advice to get a really good accountant, I, I'll double up on it and make sure you check stuff. So we had an interesting end. But it's funny how um, in business, whenever you go through, I think, hard times, it always kind of forces you to step into something. And then one of the things we found is we were probably under-marketing our business a bit. So we stepped into it. Uh, but interesting Christmas with a bunch of family stuff, but I'm actually really enjoying the starts of the year. It's been a, it's been a good one. How about awesome. you guys? Yeah, man. It's, I mean, a difficult start to the year, but, but we caught up late last year and you, you were off to um, sort of that, that New South Wales, Queensland border, right? Somewhere around there. Is that, is that ringing a bell? Uh, to, to do it, to do, to do some work. I did a speaking gig up there. Was that, jeez, it, it was that long ago. Oh, I was it, it I think ago. it was around about June, July. And I went up there. Oh, Bay, right. right. Uh, it was in, <laughs> was in Byron Bay. It's, funny enough, whenever you go to Byron, you notice everybody there is from Sydney. Yeah. That's the weirdest thing. <laughs> Byron Bay used to be um, like cool and now it's, it stopped being hipster and it started to be yuppie. It's literally coogee, mm. <laughs> but too cool for coogee. Oh, true. <laughs> I think I bring the yuppiness of Coogee down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Coogee's awesome. We're doing our next accelerator in Coogee. Are you? Yeah, yeah. So you At the Coogee Pavilion? Or? Yeah, well, I'll yeah. tell you where it is, but that means you might show up. So I probably <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, It's going to be like you waiting for a podcast invite. I'll just be walking yeah. around Coogee. Oh, Licking windows. Are we in there? Are we in there? <laughs> no, we're, we're actually, walking past. <laughs> we're actually doing it at the Coogee Bay. Which would be awesome. <laughs> the yeah, hotel? Know, at the hotel. What, just in the Salinas? Upstairs. Oh, upstairs. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I've just said venue that. upstairs. Yeah, are, you, are you gonna uh, order a lot of ice cream? That's the thing we've got to watch out for. I think we're just gonna yeah, yeah. we're gonna wait, wait and see who's not pulling their weight in the uh, in the <laughs> workshop and just order the uh, the, the, the chocolate sundae. Yeah, <laughs> oh, oh, special. Yeah. I love that. Twenty years on. Yeah. <laughs> What's the you bag known for? It's the poo in the ice cream. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's shit sundaes. <laughs> <laughs> You've noticed there's never been a there's never been a night at Coogee Bay Hotel called Sunday. <laughs> Sunday's at Coogee Bay. Yeah. Stayed away from that branding mistake. <laughs> Saturday, fake Saturday, <laughs> Monday. <laughs> I love it. So what's the workshop on? The workshop is every um, every every four months we do a two-day uh, workshop called the Accelerator. It's kind of uh, 
it's kind of I think it's the the peak of our program where everyone comes together. Uh, it's kind of the whole everyone checks in about their plans. You know, big bit of peer accountability. We have a speaker. We do a mastermind where everyone gets like five to ten minutes in front of the group, uh, and then we set the plan for the next ninety days. And that's kind of day one. Mm. But we also, we, we tacked on a day two about nine months ago. It's the best thing we've ever done because I don't know if you've ever been to a workshop and you fill out all these notes and you come back and you do nothing with the notes. Yeah. yeah. So we tacked on this thing in day two where we actually, people roll up their sleeves and we, we actually get stuff done. And we challenge people to, in a, in a sort of shorter space of time, to actually commit to doing something, implement a marketing campaign or, or reach out to clients or whatever and then come back and report to the group. Uh, this is the result I got. What, what do you think the biggest challenge for financial advisors is? Uh, I think, I think that it, does, it depends on the business. Like for, for, for growing startup, new businesses, it's definitely marketing. For a whole bunch of reasons um, to do with the way that the media's had a real crack at advice for, for a while. Yeah. The digital market, the increased entrance, um, it's, it's harder than ever to kind of bring on board new clients. And it's partly to do because, because information's so available nowadays. People don't wake up in the morning and go, you know what, I'm deciding I'm going to go see an advisor. It's a process where they go and they have a look and they say, you know, shall I, uh, shall I go and have a look at a super offering I've got or a robo-advisor or my accountant? And as a result, there's increasing competition. Mm. And particularly when you're dealing with younger clients, it tends to be a longer lead time, which is kind of a cruel, a cruel joke. If you've got the, the changes to the life insurance framework, which means that commissions are reduced, mm. and you're talking to advice businesses who are targeting Gen X and Gen Y and going, hey, guys, good news, you've got to play the long game. Mm. Yeah. Um, so is that sort of lots of touch points that you're working on them with and how do you sort of nurture people? Well, um, first thing is, like a lot, a lot of people do a lot of work on the social media stuff. But my view is the purpose of social media is to get people onto your mailing list. Because once they're on your list, you can start the process of the nurture. And whether you go via you know, video, weekly emails, the goal is to kind of just put content out there that, that is sort of bringing out the need that mm. you, know, you might have a problem here. Uh, the faster you can bring that out, the more likely you can get people starting to look for a solution. Mm -hmm. And then if they start to look for a solution, if they've been on your list, you're the person they're going to look for first. Right. So, so a startup uh, a startup business's asset is the mailing list? I'd say the faster you can get a mailing list, the less you're going to spend on, on pricing. And that's that whole tribe. I mean, you guys know about the tribe. Mm. You've, you've built a really strong brand. You stand for something. You've got a clear mission. And I think that's probably another challenge, which is, you know, how do you differentiate advice and part of the challenge is, you know, if people aren't looking for advice and all your marketing is advice, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to connect with people who are still early on in that stage. What about the channel issue of email becoming gradually less and less and less relevant because of the... Have you noticed that or what's, what's your mm -hmm. it's, experience it's, with it? It's interesting, like, if there's one thing I think is really interesting at the moment, so if you've got anybody out there who's really cutting edge, I'd be looking at sort of Messenger, like things like ManyChat and mm. some of these... Um, Messenger? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a really non-crowded channel. People are not expecting to be marketed to by Messenger. You can do lead forms into Messenger. Is that you do lead forms. Yeah. You can do bots. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah these AI sort of mm. sales. Have you have you looked at that? We're, we've got one. We're testing around a few yeah. different yeah. versions. Yeah. Uh, how, how does it work? So uh, it's essentially a it's a it's a it's a messenger server. You see a lot of apps you download now. They they it's it's put forward as a conversation between you and a you know an imaginary person. Right. Mm -hmm. And what it's looking for is it's you're analyzing right if somebody says. X, mm. uh, respond Y. So within our program, we've got like a, we've got a tool, a sheet internal and, and for client, for advisors, which says, if people have this problem, this is a tool that will help and this is the benefit of that. Mm. And essentially what you're doing is you're just using uh, rudimentary AI to kind of teach a bot that if someone says pricing or someone says I've got a fee problem or someone says I need more leads, potentially it could be the right response would be A, B, C, and D. Or yeah, point them yeah. to your knowledge center. Or exactly, like yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's essentially like if, if, you, if you have got a large-scale business that's doing online stuff in that, in that knowledge space, mm. that's, that's what you're teaching your, your, your chat people to do. It's, mm. like a, it's like a call center, but, but essentially... Uh, I think that would really work for some people. So, for example, that very robotic way of communicating would fit, say... Adrian's personality really accurately. <laughs> so uh, there would Does be it no. It swear? It, 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 there, there would be no difference between whether it was a bot yeah. and literally someone would say, um, "I need help with my super," and the response, whether it was a bot Do or Adrian, would be, "I don't understand your question." <laughs> Followed by, "Would you like some stuff?" <laughs> <laughs> would you like to go to the beach? <laughs> <laughs> would you? <laughs> what do you think of my shirt? That, yeah. that, that's a, <laughs> 
Just how good standard is standard response? Show. How good is my show? <laughs> you know who does do the, the chat ten. thing really well? Uh, Telstra. So I don't know if anyone's got Telstra, but you can either call. Is that a chatbot I talk to? Well, you can either wait. You can. <laughs> that's pretty bloody good. <laughs> that's all your Tinder matches, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another frontier. For don't me. click the link, Patty. Don't click the link. <laughs> They're not open twenty four seven. The but pictures just... are not free. Dude. <laughs> so They're right. really not. <laughs> Why do I keep paying for these things? <laughs> Connect the vibe, Bluetooth. <laughs> I, I was talking to a, a really niche business because, like, a, the challenge is a lot of businesses are still like they're quite they can be quite broad. Some of the yeah. questions, and it's hard to sort of go, how do you put something out there when you're going to have it's only fifty percent of what people are going to ask because the other fifty percent is like just could be anything. Yeah. Whereas this business is really niche, and what they're doing is really capturing all their email um, communication with clients, and they're getting that all they're getting it all as a data set, and then they just upload that into a chatbot and that's mm. that's what they're mm. working on right now and because their business is so niche so it's in generally car finance you, you've got a certain range of questions and I think businesses like that they're going to be the first ones to be able to sort of get take advantage of it because mm. like for advice like shit you get like for you it could probably work with advice businesses because it's generally similar problems but like if you think about like the general public for an advice business like mm, I don't know mate if you if you sort of go to the, the, the basic questions when people first engage an advisor the, the, the scope of questions aren't too dissimilar mm. and it's, then you have like an elevation point that just like if it is out of that well it'll get to a point where the complexity requires a meeting right but you've mm. already engaged the client so job or done or a phone call or if, what, yeah whatever mm. it is mm. Um, but you can create that journey, I think, quite. You, you speak to advisors have been doing it a while, right? And one of the often fatigues they have is having the same conversation over and over again. Yeah. Totally. And I think if you... Uh, but the second problem we kind of haven't come on to, which is if you've got a more mature business, it's, it's the service model. Like what worked 15 years ago to manage two or 300 mm-hmm. clients just doesn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. And it work, doesn't work because of the legislation, but it also works because the more technology we have, the more we expect high touch. Mm. You know, mm. if uh, Amazon can email you on a daily basis and go, hey, here's, you know, I don't know, uh, whatever whatever you buy on a regular basis, it's right in front of you. I'm not going to comment on what you normally buy. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon knows. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa knows. Um, so, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Yeah, so the second thing is the service model. But uh, I think over the long term, mm. if you're an advice business and there's stuff you're doing one-to-one-to-one all the time, I, that's straight away I'd be like, right, I'm going to create a, a video or a workshop. And then eventually you can create a whole library of Q&A stuff. Mm. Which, you know, if someone asks, what's the best way to, you know, save money on my phone bill? Hey, great. I, I had that conversation a while ago. Here's a script. Mm. Totally. I can't wait for the first advisor to do a short course. Now, I know we're building a, a platform for, for service providers to, to give to advisors, but I can't wait until some advisor comes out with a $50 short course with four 45-minute videos, mm. um, th- which then leads into a first meeting. I, I can't wait. It'd be, I, I, do you know of anyone that's done it? Um, I know some really good people that could do that, yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, well, right. Stu would be a great person to sort of contribute to something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Change your tack and bleed. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't Ramit Sethi done that though? Isn't that his thing? Um, I'm pretty sure he's who, got who was that Ramit saying? Sethi, the, the personal finance expert. I, I want you to be rich. Oh, right. Ye- yeah. Yes. He does have a lot of short courses, right? He does, yeah. Yeah, but, d- but no advisor does. I find that really weird. I, rec- I reckon this is because, and most, it comes down to that point about most people don't wake up in the morning and go, I, I want financial advice. They might say, you know what? I want to get my cash flow in order, but they don't necessarily want to have to actually do it themselves. This is the mm. whole disparity between financial education and I'm, I'm not interested. I just want it done for me. And that's, mm. that's one of the things, whereas, um, like, for example, if you're building a list at the top of the funnel, uh, they're not interested in what you think they need, you need. They're not interested in the fact that you're, you know, you need to be disciplined or all the rest of it. They, they just want to know what, mm. they, what they're looking for. So often if you're... Um, for example, if you're, if you're going after a certain target market, it's the better way to start is to kind of put your, take your financial advice hat off and just ask, what are those people clicking on? If they're clicking on, you know, um, uh, lifestyle articles, on how to, how to finance my next BMW or, um, mm. you know, uh, 10 apps I really need to have in my life right now, put that con out, content out there, build that sort of face-to-face time and every now and again, mm. 
you know, seed it with this is what I do, you know, kind of like the uh, the James Bond watches of movies, and pop a couple of offers in there every three or four times. P.S. I'm running a workshop. P.S. Mm. I'm doing a bit of research. P.S. If you've got a question, you know, ch- shoot me an email. I'll respond. Well, I'm interested. Like you're you're across a number of advice practices. That was a check. So you're really <laughs> <laughs> you you've got a good sense check of what um, how advisors are bringing in the business. So are there many of the guys that you work with still calling um, like a, a book of clients and generating business? that way or have the majority migrated to either referral partners or a more digital engagement process um there's still a lot of people who work books yeah and it's still very effective yeah because totally. if, if you think uh if you we have a sort of a tool which is called the funnel of patience which looks at there's four ways you can get clients uh and at one end you've got you know grab a list pick up a phone work a book at the other end you've got build a you know digital sales funnel and mm-hmm. the two extremes are you know, if you want to lead tomorrow, pick up the phone. It's going to be a lot of work. You've got to phone 100 people, but you're going to get a result quickly. If you want to build a digital lead funnel or you want to build an audience, mm. you're looking at six months solid content marketing, solid work. But, totally. But once you set up, it's automated. Mm. Yeah. So a lot of people are still sort of still on that sort of pick up the phone because it works. Mm. Uh, client referrals, I think, are still one of the best way. And a, a lot of business I speak to, they do it every now and again. But they don't do it consistently. It's not systemized. Yeah, it's not. Client referrals is not an event. Asking for a client referral is not an event. It's a habit. Mm. It's something you seed all the way through your engagement process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that something you recommend for advisors to be asking clients yeah. for referrals? Yeah. and having the authority to do that. Absolutely, and there's, there's. I know a lot of people don't want to. You know, they don't want to do the. A referral is the biggest compliment at the bottom of the email. You don't have to. There's ways of doing it. Sort of asking, having conversations with clients. For example, you know, I just want to ask a question. Uh, we're seeing a lot of clients at the moment talk about this issue. You know, they're, they're worried about returns. Or, what are you finding your friends are talking about right now? Oh, well, I mean, do you talk to your friends about money? Yeah, sometimes. What do you talk about? We talk about this, this, and this. Cool. Well, look, do me a favour. If any of these topics come up, uh, and you think it'd be appropriate to introduce me to anybody like you who's you know talking about those kind of things, would you do me a favour and just you know maybe drop us an email and just do an intro? That'd be awesome. Thank you. And. I think I saw a piece of research recently that said 70% of satisfied clients indicate they would refer, but only 23%, one in three, actually do. Yeah. So the thing about getting referrals is you've got to, you've got to prime it on a regular basis and you've got to give people ammunition. You've got to give them reasons to trigger and go do a favour for their friend and send them through. Mm. So, Do you, you see it off the back of like net promoter scores? Is anyone using that sort of function quite well in their business? Yeah, like everybody kind of uses it. Yep. And I think it's 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 a standardised way of sort of testing because you get it, that bit makes it a bit more systemised sort of thing. You, you had like a key moment in the advice process. It, net it, promoter score goes out. It does as long as people understand what net promoter score is. Yeah, like <clears> if you give me a one to ten, and I don't know what the hell's going on, and I go, yeah. oh six. Well, that means I'm actually a, I don't care one way or another. Yeah. But if you explain, like, the easiest way to influence net promoter is tell people, hey, by the way, this is a net promoter score. If you give me nine or ten, it means you love me. Yeah. People go, oh, okay, 9 or 10. Well, it's the positioning, yeah. yeah. And so, for the benefit of people that don't know what net promoter score is. Do you want to go? Oh. Yeah, well, it's, it's like a metric that's used internationally for a lot of large businesses mm. like Telstra or Optus. Like when they send out, they've done a bit of service for you. They'll send out this quick questionnaire. And anything above, yeah, like you said, I think anything it's, above a 6. I think it's 9 and 10 is, is these definitely, people will refer... I think seven and eight is their neutral. Yeah. And, or maybe, five, yeah, anyway. But this, five, six, and then five, five, under and and then that, they detractor. Forget so, it. Yeah. So the idea is you've got an existing client or customer. They've engaged with you. You then ask them what that experience was like. And then you from that, you get a score mm. to work out how much yeah. of your client base is well, you, willing you, you, to. Yeah, big businesses use it to get an aggregate view of like how they're actually tracking. Because it's a real simple question. Um, it's just one question and you get this data set that comes out of it. Yeah. Um, and then you can have like the other one, what people do off the back of it is like if it's a good question, oh, why, why was that the case? If it's sort of mediocre, what can we do better? And the same for um, like if it's bad, like you then start to understand, you can drill down into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can try and turn around, go, oh my God, we're a three. We should probably reach out to this client and find out what went wrong. Well, and the key point is if you're not having that conversation, you're not discovering that. Yeah. Does that work for small business though? Because I just wonder if you've got a personal relationship with someone in a small business mm. and you ask them what the experience was like. I just wonder whether or not that personal relationship might clutter the responses you get. So you end up with a five or a six. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Um, one of my the formative experiences in what I do is I got involved in a starting a, a startup incubator in about 2013 called Corporate to Freedom. 
and a lot of uh, early stage startup it's businesses. It's very corporate name, isn't it? You like it? Well, actually, it was a corporate... I, was the logo, <laughs> like, was this, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of those clip art che- word things, just like, like. <laughs> it's like an outline, just this dude jumping in the air. It should have been, isn't it? It was actually, we got it done on, on uh, 99 designs for a logo composition, and it, it, it actually, I'll show it to you, it looks like a pram. <laughs> But it was just like, they were, I don't know if anyone's ever had a logo. Bring it up, bring it up. Oh, I'd Hello. have to dig it out. Hold on. <laughs> it's um, it's brand just, logo. I liked it, but uh, in retrospect, you know, it's kind of like the name Aldere. It's like, that's a great idea. No, not such a great idea. <laughs> Nobody can are we, spell are it. Are we at, to a point, at a point where you could pivot on that name yet? Or Naomi Christopher, God bless her. We were in uh, San Francisco and I turned around and said, uh, uh, my phone went late, unfortunately. Ah. I said, if there's, you know, you're a marketing expert. She went, yeah, that's right. I'm a marketing expert. <laughs> <laughs> She is. She is. So, you know, if someone's an expert, I love it when they do. So, yeah, I'm actually really good at that. What do you need to know? Um, and I said, what would you know, There's one bit of advice you give me about the business. What would she? What would you do? And she just looked me dead in the eyes and goes, change the goddamn name. <laughs> and I was like, I can't name. I can't change the name. She said, really? And I said, well, you know, you've got a you've got a software company that's named after a, a 1980s computer game. She was like, how do you know that? I'm like, never mind. I'm a geek. Anyway, she turned around and said, well, if you can't. If you can't change the name, explain the goddamn thing, what it means. So uh, since then, I've just told nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, the thing is, I don't know if that's going to help me. Bell <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there was a point. Where, yeah, corporate freedom. Anyway, and they say one of the things is you want to, at an early stage, you want to get out there and ask those initial users. Uh, what was it that made you sign up? What, you know, all these things. But mm. when you ask people, you know, what do you think of something? Mm-hmm. They generally, they will sit on the fence. Mm. But if you ask them really directly, hey, be really, I'd be really good if you tell me, what don't you like about what I do? Mm, that's yeah. a hard question. It's a hard question, but it's it's much more effective yeah. than yeah. asking, hey, what do you think? Because people go, oh, you guys, you know, you, you, you dress nicely. You're, uh, mm. You sound good. You know, but what Dulcet don't, tones. Yeah. Mm. I mean, like, Adrian, what don't you like about these guys? It's an easy question to answer, yeah. right? And it's, it's framed yeah. it's, it, is there <laughs> anything, too easily, I fear. Is there anything you don't like as opposed to what do you not like? So you have to answer something. It's not It's not a, a choice of if there mm. is anything you don't Set like. It's like assuming you don't like what mm. I do, what, what is that? Free just just make make it on a get those answers on a day of wins, <laughs> not not when you've uh, you know been beaten yeah. over the back of head. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Choose an upbeat moment, you know, when you've uh, yeah yeah yeah. So how um like you do? I think what you've started to do with the accountability piece with all of your advisors, I think that seems to work really well because I think that's that's always like there's always all this content going out to advisors. And um, like you're saying, off the back of that, um, your workshop, you yeah. then do another one where it's like getting them to start it. Because so many people can go out there consuming content and yeah. ideas throughout the year. It's just that next step into actually doing it. And that was like, accountability piece, like an advisor with the client, essentially. Dude, you've been listening. I'm, I'm <laughs> um, It's just two things, the accountability piece. It's like, you know, Derek Sivers, who started CD Baby? Great company. He wrote a book called uh, Every, I think you can have everything. But there's this is great saying, I think he came across on Tim Ferriss' podcast, and he said, information's not the solution. Because if information was the solution, we'd all be billionaires with great apps. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's totally true. It's like, infom- we live in a world where there's information everywhere, but it's actually the application of that information that matters. So um, uh, one of the things I've tried to do, and, and probably works for Cashflow as well, is when we come off the back of the program, we have like a 90-day rhythm, which mm. is, you know, the first week is all about confirming you've got the right plan. And then we walk people through and say, right, now you've got the right plan. You need to actually install the doing in your diary. You need to block out the time and go and pre-brief your graphic designer. And then we work in two-week sprints, which is we check in on Monday, what's lined up, what's booked in, and we check in halfway, and and we just get things done that way before we kind of reach uh, sort of four weeks for Accelerator. And 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 we go, right, (laughs) what have you done and what you not got done? And let's get realistic. And let's cull the 80%, which we don't need to get the result. And then the most important bit at the end, which I think a lot of people miss out, is you've actually got to drop everything and celebrate. You've got to create this dopamine feedback loop that mm. makes you just want to do it again. A lot of people miss that out, particularly high performers. They're so busy going, what next, what next, what next? Mm. They don't stop to go, hold on, look how far I've come. But is the dopamine in that journey, though? Mm. Uh, it is. Is it but maybe the personality of the... 
there's, it's interesting when you look at type A personalities, mm. it's got to do with cortisol, I'm, so I'm told by my, a lot of people, including my therapist. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> cortisol you is... You need to celebrate your wins. Yeah. You know, do that. <laughs> cortisol is a, it's a, like an adrenal drug, I, think, I believe, and uh, it's in your system and it's, it's a fight flight thing. So mm. in other words, when you're high on cortisol, you're constantly looking for the next, the escape route. Yes. Okay? So it drives you forward. Fantastic for driving you forward. The problem is it's a, it's a stress drug. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not very good for your system. So particularly you kind of get, if you don't have that time to stop, reflect, be in the moment, you get people who are really, really well equipped to get there, but can never actually, you know, enjoy the moment they get there. Mm -hmm. that yeah, I, I mean, without, without uh, the highly successful uh, part of it, I definitely am one of those people that am driven with cortisol. Uh, and personally, I use... Brazilian jiu-jitsu to be in the moment because no matter what is going on in my life, if I'm getting choked uh, out... Yeah. If I've got a man's crutch <laughs> on my face, it really just snaps uh, me out of it. it, it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing else to think about. But, um, but so, so exercise for me yeah. is super important Like for that in the moment. I can't do the, the meditation thing. I really struggle with that. Mm. Um, but the... But the but the highest, I guess the high, the further high stress environment. But, but the physical may, interruption. From, from a biological perspective, fight or flight equals back to times we were running around through the savanna, running away from stuff that wants to kill us. Mm. So it's not a million miles away from the Brazilian jiu-jitsu no. thing, or for me, it's going for a run. You know, you're releasing that energy. You're literally running for your life, and you come back and you feel much better equipped to deal with stuff, right? Yeah, that's true. We haven't developed very much. No, still the same operating system. Is that a, is that is that a discussion? You because like. I guess if you're working with these guys and they haven't sort of worked out some of these advisors that how to release or do things yeah. like that, and it's you could have this great program and you could see that just completely get undermined because they haven't been able to manage that outlet or we ha we did uh, our last accelerator last year. We actually brought in one, I have a performance coach Ben Elliott. I give him a plug. He's he's awesome, uh, and I brought him in to do a session on uh, advice confidence. So how you as an advisor can get in the right frame of mind before seeing a client, so you can you know. Don't be working on an SI or, or a strategy or your compliance order before you walk into the meeting with the client because that's going to totally impact a lot of things. And we also talked about how to influence people's attitudes towards money because people, you guys will know, people come into the room and, you know, you start talking about money and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the bonnet, you know, the lessons they've learned, the experience they've had. Um, I did a webinar with them earlier this year. It's a big part of it. Um, one, of the, one of the sort of models we use in the program, there's a guy called Chris Michelson. He's a coach. I love the model he uses to say to people, there's only five reasons people don't get what they want in life, whether that's funny or business or relationships or whatever. First one is they don't have a vision. They don't actually know what they want. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Some, some people, number two, have a, they have a vision, but they don't have a plan. In other words, they're, they're just wishing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you have a vision and a plan, but they don't have the knowledge. They're missing some key bits of information that's going to help them make progress. Let's say you've got someone who's got a vision, plan, and knowledge, but they don't have the support. In other words, they don't have the time they don't have the uh, access to the tools, whether that's, you know, platforms or investment vehicles or whatever it is. So in other words, they're, they're trying to do it and they're trying to do it too slowly. And frankly, if, it's, if they've got all of those things in place, the only thing that's left is mindset. It's either a self-sabotage, perfectionism, or some other stuff. Under yeah, the insidious sort of stuff, that perfectionism and self-sabotage, isn't it? Perfectionism's a bloody nightmare, especially yeah. as a business coach. You, you, so you do, do you work with a therapist to refer advisors through or...? Uh, do I work with my therapist? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've, got, look, I've always invested in coaching because uh, I don't have all the answers and, and performance coaching is just one of it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so let because we're going to wrap this up pretty quickly, tell us where can people go to find out more about Stu Bell and, and everything that you do? Just go to Tinder. Uh, type in my name. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, I only get search on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that yeah. would be awesome. Can you because you can advertise on Tinder, right? Oh, give it a go. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot oh, of puns you can use. Swipe left, swipe right, swipe right. <laughs> Pixel, <laughs> Pixel tracking. I have no idea what the angle on Pixel on Tinder would be. Probably just swipe right. Or, I no, don't no, know. no. Yeah. You got your name, Stuart Bell. There's 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 something there. 
<laughs> friend Stuart Bell underline friend to Adrian Paddy. That would do it. That would that would actually, actually Pat, Paddy 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 let me update. I think we're his... digressing, guys. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Way off track. Pa- Paddy let me update his uh, his Tinder bio. It's now currently GQ. Wait, wait. Dad bot of the year. Yeah. GQ magazine. <laughs> <laughs> um, if anyone's got feedback for Clay on that one, uh, let's send it through. Actually, now we're talking about chatbots. Someone actually, um, we're going way off track, but they actually did a, 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 an actual test of what works on Tinder. Check it out. There's a whole really? thread on it. Oh. Well, and there's an actual app. Yeah, there's a proven proven sequence that'll every single like. It's works only on 80%. iPhone. I've got an Android. Where, where do you find those answers? I'm asking for a friend. Uh, I, just, <laughs> just email Adrian. <laughs> Sparkprofessional.com.au for all the information. Um, Look, if you if you want to find out more about us, go to uh, the website. You might um, need to spell Aldera, that for people. A u d e r e dot com dot au, or if you if you got a question, just email me at help at aldera dot com dot au, and we'll have a chat. And the <laughs> chatbot will answer. The do chatbot you, will answer. <laughs> and, do, you, and, do you have any events coming up or anything like that? Uh, we do. Look, um, we we have the leverage advice program, cool. which um, is kind of we we're going to start off the intake again post the workshop, which is the twenty second, twenty third of February. Uh, that's kind of for businesses who are at a point where the revenue is no longer an issue. They're starting to get profit, and they're now looking at the service model, the scalable. We're also sort of toying around with, uh, we've had some, some real interest in businesses that they're not quite ready at the point where they want to scale, mm. but they just need some help with the revenue and the profitability. So we're we're toying around with launching. An so is that an early stage business? Yeah, yeah. Sure. so t- typically businesses that are under sort of two hundred and fifty and three hundred thousand dollars worth of revenue, sure. and they've got enough where they're kind of you know, almost almost at a point where they don't have to worry about paying the bills but and they just want to sort of take it up a level yep. so we're we're toying around we're, we're sort of doing a beta launch of uh, an online program to kind of work cool. with that putting together a really small group to work together so if people are interested mm. uh, it's pretty early stage but yeah help at adairy.com.au yep. I'll give just you just email you one. yeah just email us and we'll just shoot you through some info and, awesome and tell us if it's for you or not very good well thanks, thanks. very much for coming on mate yeah thank you in the yeah. uh, centre of the hipster universe I know <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks, mate. Really, Bye, nice guys. Thanks, man. Cheers. Thanks, man. Cheers.